Folks, please take this in properly. Not too long ago, I said that Romania had the best countryside, the best people and the best food. And now, after I've been in charge and kind of ruined the country a bit, we are in a situation where on the left side we have the city of Brazov, and this city is inside of the Austrian Empire and they are happy. And on the right side we have Zeptisch and Gyorgi, which is definitely not how you pronounce this by the way, that's Hungarian, and that is in Romania and people are very angry. We are in a situation where not everything is as it seems and everything is a bit of a mess. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, I absolutely love this situation because it's 1904 in a normal Victoria 3 playthrough, especially in 1.1.2 and before we were looking at a situation where in that year I would be great power number one no matter what I do and everybody would be happy. We would have happy and incredibly powerful trade unions. Instead we have trade unions that went communist, trade unions that are only 6.6% of the cloud and trade unions that are only happy because we just passed slavery banned. We are a country that is deeply divided and needs to figure out its future, much like, well, basically most other countries here. Germany, for example, is still stuck between the feminist slash social democrat slash reformist slash anarchist sort of leadership in the Kaiserreich and of course the fact that they are a Kaiserreich. We are in a situation where we might turn communist, where we might turn incredibly aristocratic again, where we might turn urban or rural. So many options, so many questions, despite it already being the year 1904. That is exactly where I want to be in 1904. So with that being said, what lies ahead of us is definitely the social question of Romania. Who do we want to be as a society and where can we even go? You can see right here we have 2.27 million laborers that are unhappy with our leadership, then the peasants, the machinists, basically the entire lower strata is in a position where they say to themselves, man, this system really isn't working out for us. 21% of all lower strata pops are underneath their expected standard of living. That is primarily because they all picked up books and were like, you know what, I I can read and I read about a better place in the world and this ain't it. Now on the world stage I would actually say that we are largely content. We have a colony in North Borneo here in the Horn of Africa. We can add potentially Ethiopia to our market in the near future and we're looking at a situation where this will be well you know largely our colony. Obviously the British are also coming in but we have a pretty good speed. We're also pushing the institution further. Other than that I think hey if the chance ever were to arise I would like to claim a treaty port in China just because it's kind of poetic right? Romania immediately sprung up and did this. Now the other side of the coin is obviously that I also want the rest of Romania back from Austria and honestly I didn't notice this but our defensive pact with Russia is over. I don't think I cancelled it, I, I don't know how this happened but this means maybe Bessarabia and the rest of Dobruja are actually on the menu. So that is the situation on an international level. Should we turn communist, by the way, with the new settings of people disliking our ideology, we may have to be very defensive. We basically have to create a bulwark akin to the one that was built in Albania during the Cold War. Now the easiest question, because this is fully in our control, or at least I hope so, is what do we do domestically? We have had a long-standing alliance between the intelligentsia and the industrialists, and this has strengthened us significantly but recently this has fallen apart. The industrialists went into their own party, however, they seem to be willing to return and this is a really good situation. What I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to move the industrialists into our government, puts us only to contested government, that's not perfect, but what are you going to do? Alternatively, we would have to work together with the communists and I would prefer if the intelligentsia you know, didn't go communist. Uh, at the very least, if they do, then we have an actual showdown. Now, what I would like to pass right here is actually some social security legislation. The poor laws aren't amazing, they take away power from the trade unions, but this is the fitting move, right? If you are a national liberal, so a fairly conservative force, so this will be the reform angle that we're taking. Let's see how it goes, and if the communists were to be strengthened even more, maybe we will actually have to face a revolutionary struggle. Oh, and this is a big one, electrical generation. And we're so late, but I mean, fair enough, right? Uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go into Dobruja and gonna switch this over to electric streetlights. I don't think I have the money to currently do this, but you know what I do have? I, I think I can actually use lead here. I'm just gonna start importing this from the French market and so on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna change a bunch of RPMs here. All right, yeah, this is definitely looking a whole lot better. I have standardized the production methods and I've made it so that we can now get some lead. We, we are producing our own dye, so this shouldn't really be an issue. The capitalist AI should build this up further and further. Now the lead is, uh, it's so depressing because we are so close. We are so close to lead. And yet we have none. At the very least, we can import it, you know, all of this stuff. We are gonna fill our actual market supply, or rather demand, and we will be fine. Other than that, we are doing okay on the economic side of things. 
The one big thing that I'm waiting for is oil. Because we have oil right here. We have oil, I believe, in the Congo as well. Once we get that technology, and I'm currently researching it, man, our economy can supply the rest of Europe. At least that's the dream, right? That is what I would like to achieve. Yeah, and it is really apparent to me just how much we are walking on a knife's edge. Because think about this. The Intelligentsia are so powerful because they are love. They have a plus 200. And we're only keeping this guy happy, who is a nihilist, because we are doing very, very progressive reforms. But his ultimate goal is to destroy the very basics of our social order. Both the monarchy and, of course, the actual church. I don't know. I hope the Intelligentsia becomes like a moderate, maybe reformer. That would be ideal, but I am worried that this is a trend that ultimately leads into communism. See, now, normally this event is a no-brainer. The prospect of workhouses, including religious instruction in their work, has allowed the proposal of poor laws to gain favor with the Orthodox Church. Well, uh, normally I would say absolutely, sure, we're making Protestant pops a bit less happy, who cares, who asked, but... I gotta tell you, we got a nihilist. Absolutely not. The, the Church will not play a role here. Now, I am looking at this. President Wen Sun is looking at a situation where he might have a rebellion. If he does, that would actually splinter it. A single more rebellion and China would fulfill the full Fragile Unity journal entry. Ooh, and look at that pump checks. Oil immediately discovered in Valachia. That is huge. That is massive because we are going to become, if I have any say in it, the biggest exporter of oil in the world. All right, and there it is. This will definitely cost us quite something here, but let's just take in what the initial cost is. Only 3.05k, yeah, that is absolutely manageable. Quite frankly, this is really just us weakening the working class more. And this is, as you might be able to see here, incredibly, incredibly important. We need to weaken the trade unions, or we're gonna see a vanguardist leader, and with that, a communist dictatorship fairly soon. Which wouldn't be a problem if it wasn't for the fact, yep, look at that, even Germany has left the communist opportunity behind. All of a sudden, there is no anarchist except in the rural folks. The trade unions turned feminist, meaning that they are much less radical about their ambitions. If we turned communist and there was no ally, we would definitely get completely destroyed by the surrounding powers. Guaranteed liberties. Not really bad, and it definitely would sort of maybe mellow out our society a bit even more. If they start getting more money, then instead of going communist with that money, they would simply say, you know what, the status quo is acceptable. Huh, and Sintang wants a defensive pact. You know what, I will definitely actually take this. And then let me ask you, how willing are you to join me? Uh, obviously an alliance is a no-go here. Financing them, yeah, this is barely, no, uh, barely any money. I think we can probably turn them into a protectorate given enough time. Um, we will have elections, I believe, in 1906, right? And after those elections, let's take a look at this, right? So you, oh, they will now actually remain splintered in the Free Trade Party. The rural folk, no longer interested in any party, really. The petite bourgeoisie going conservative. Oh, man. Um, I think I'm going to leave any future reforms here until after the next election. Unless, you know what? No, this, this actually makes a lot of sense here, right? The rural folk dislike it. The trade unions are in favor of it, I guess, over agrarianism. This definitely is moving with the times. The Intelligentsia has gained so many rights, so many guaranteed liberties, the social payments, and so on. This is the favor that we do to, uh, to the industrialists. Hopefully, this also means that we can grow a bit faster. Oh, look. We finally got him. All right, get out of here. Oh, and it looks like after all this time, we are actually about to see a unified Italy. All Sardinia Piedmont needs to do here is actually take this front line. Once they take the capital of Sicily, it's over. Finally, man, it took them long enough. Oh, but the oh, and the Russians are losing, man. I think the Russians abandoning our defensive pact actually is good for us in the end. They just are so left behind on technology. The election results are in. It looks like the National Liberal Party of the Intelligentsia and the Rule 4 completely crushed it. But that means we might very well move away a good bit further from being the autocracy that we currently are. You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do them a favor. This guy's a nihilist. I don't think getting rid of the monarchy is realistic, and I think, hmm, maybe I'm wrong though. I mean, actually, these are, this is definitely a civil war. This is a civil war, and I don't think that he wants to cause a civil war. Yes, he is progressive, but he's not a radical. You know what, this on the other hand, freedom of conscience at the very last, I mean, that is a big step. So you know what, let's push that through. I guess this just makes sense. We are further and further moving away from Russia. Russia, of course, also an orthodox country. Orthodoxy means less and less in this country. Being Romanian means quite a bit. And while we do this, you know what I think what time it is? Let me let me just double check this, right? How is China doing? They have 16 ships. I mean, we don't have many troops, but we definitely have more ships than that. Let me just uh, throw out our 40 here. Who's gonna, 
Who's gonna run the show? I think he looks he looks really good. Yeah, I like Ooh, I love this though. Yeah, that is a great, great trade for sure. We're gonna promote him. And I think 1907 seems about the right time to demand a treaty port. You know what? Yeah, I'll go ahead. Alright, okay, so this is very cool. Galadi abandoned us, who cares? Listen, why are you such a son of a gun? They are just a defensive-minded country, okay? They don't really understand what we're doing here, but we need to secure the full-on trade with China. There's not really a way around that. And I think we can do this on our own, because we do now have trench infantry. But, you know what is even better than doing it on our own? Can I offer Germany? Oh, I can! I'm gonna offer you a Shandong treaty port. There you go. And now let's see whether we can't, Romania can't, get its own treaty port in China. Oh, and look at that. China immediately became fearful. <laughs> Maybe they'll just give in, honestly. That would also be pretty cool. Oh, and Jesus Christ, China is actually in bankruptcy. I, I'm pretty sure we could have probably taken them on our own. But, I mean, you know, I'll take the German help. We, we're, gonna, we're gonna stage an invasion. And there you go, freedom of conscience. It's been done. All right, okay, so that's pretty decent. Um, it's not as good, obviously, if you are a very uh, homogenous nation, but this makes perfect sense with the intelligentsia. The thought, the word, and the ideal. Those who seek to think boldly and freely are increasingly finding Romania to be one of the safest places to explore their ideas. Right, I mean, technically, actually, yeah. Outside of the national supremacy, look at that. We have guaranteed liberties, we got right of assembly, we even got poor laws. We are a pretty, well, not good country, but we're getting there. We're definitely getting there. Um, I'm more interested in the university, I think. The new Colossus is, I gotta be honest with you, something that we're definitely not going to get done. Multiculturalism, no migration controls, no way. That is not what Romania is in this. Alright, it is now time to bring our very own troops all the way to China. And hope that we can actually work this out numbers-wise. Um, I don't think my invasions are gonna be too successful, but I'm really hopeful about the invasions of the Germans. And, I mean, ultimately, China is in default. Let's just see how it goes. Yeah, and here you can see the power of trench warfare, no doubt. We're gonna lose this, but if I get more conscripts for Radu, I think we're, we're definitely gonna succeed here. Oh, and there they are, the Germans are landing. I Listen, I just wanna land as well. I want the glory of Romania to be felt on the battlefield. Um, I just need you to actually recruit your troops before more troops become available, come on. Oh, there we go, That's, this is our battle, and we'll also win it, let's go. All right. Germany and Romania together bullying China. What a timeline. This is just an absolutely horrendous result for the Great Qing. Absolutely terrible. Jesus Christ. I mean, it's 1908. Um, I think the splintering will happen fairly soon. Oh, wow. They actually just capitulated. China saw that it had absolutely no shot and gave in before more people would die. And all of a sudden, Port Arthur... That's right, it belongs to Romania, as it should. Uh, I need to build a port, first things first here, right? We're gonna build a port, we're gonna build this up, and then we have free access to China as we need it. Very nice. Ah, uh, you know, I'm actually not sure now. I'm pretty sure that the cutoff point of when wealth makes private schools better than public schools, I don't think we've reached that yet, but maybe we have. I'm gonna pass public schools, uh, private schools, because this is the compromise between the industrialist and the intelligentsia. Religious schools obviously is out. Come on. Jesus, just look at this. We got a treaty port. Germany has a treaty port. France has a treaty port. Britain has a treaty port. Portugal has a, tr a treaty port. And Russia took, of course, outer Manchuria. China is exactly, I mean, where they were historically speaking. And finally, this actually has now also worked out. I am the single reason, and I'm being completely, completely serious here, the single reason that Ethiopia has been capable of industrializing in any capacity. Look at this. They've risen up here as soon as I started trading with them. And the reason for this is that they do not have any coal, they do not have any capability when it comes to, for example, engines. I have been importing all that stuff into their land. And this now makes it so that they are quite friendly to me. And while I didn't bankroll them, I didn't coerce them, Against the favor, they are willing to join my customs union. Romania is, without a doubt, in control of the Horn of Africa. And oh no, even the US are now going in. And they want to conquer Guangdong? You're kidding me. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so they didn't. They just threatened to conquer Guangdong. Wait, where did they take... Where did they take the treaty port? Am I, oh, there it is. <laughs> they, they actually took uh, Shanghai, I believe, right? Huh, well, Nantong technically. But uh, there you go, yeah. China is in a worse place than historically speaking. Oh, and uh, Jesus. Scandinavia is going fascist, huh? We got a traditionalist, an ethno-nationalist, and a moderate. And there we finally have it. We are now a major power. I don't think we're going to become a great power here, but we have definitely risen up 
in an incredible way after we, you know, properly unified, after we grabbed more land, after we got a colonization. All of this right here is all done in just the last couple of years. Now, is it time? Is it time to move against Austria? Man, I don't know. It's a it's a difficult question. I think they're still sitting largely, if not entirely, yeah, on line infantry. Their navy, on the other hand, is bigger. But is it better? Ah, oh, they do now have monitors. That is that is not good for us, man. That is that is super. Yeah, that's gonna be really difficult unless we have a strong ally like oh Britain, God. Britain, Germany. Russia at the very least still likes us. I mean that's not bad. Ooh, we could even have an alliance with Russia. Now with Germany we couldn't. Hmm. Oh, and here we're seeing a really interesting escalation. It's 1911. This is a war fought over Buganda. In all seriousness, that is actually what it is. The French are promised a West Indies treaty port. Wait, oh, so this would be a treaty port into Scandinavia, I think? Is Scandinavia in this? No, it's not. So it must be a British treaty port. Jesus, what a what an odd request. But look at this. Elsa's Lorraine. Germany is in this. Which means all the great powers are actually... Oh, what the hell? Where's Italy coming from? And it was formed by Sardinia Piedmont. I, wait a minute, since when have they been here? I know that they, they had a war going on for this, but I did not see them win. And all of a sudden, Italy is here. Alright, you know what? Since this now keeps France, Germany and Britain in check, I think it's time for us that we move against Austria. Can we actually sustain this? Honestly, I have no idea. But I'm gonna try. Uh, we're gonna start sort of, you know what? No, we, we can't afford that. We're gonna start cycling this out because our colonization efforts actually are basically done, right? This is everything that we're gonna get. It's completely fine. And now is the time where we need to ask ourselves, can we fight Austria? Honestly, I have no idea, but hey, we gotta do it for Romania, right? I hereby demand every single piece of territory that is rightfully Romanian. Thank you very much. Let's just hope that this uh, doesn't end in disaster, yeah? I'm just quite positive towards this, actually, because... Oh, and Germany would want to join this, but... Honestly, we don't want Germany to join, because they're already fighting France. This would just be a multi-front war. Germany would definitely lose. We could invite... Russia, but... I'm not so sure about this. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna... First of all, we're gonna make sure that this army is actually recruited, or that you have somebody here, do we? Yeah, okay, we got you. Uh, we're gonna send you... And immediately attack this. And you know what? I'm actually going to go ahead and demand that territory as well. You think it's going to... Oh, God. It's also expensive. Um, I would like Austrian Congo for sure. How are we doing here? Are we over 50 yet? 50 is a, is a pretty magic number. So we're going to demand the Congo. They can keep Gabon. Maybe we're going to take that at a later date. All right. And from here, uh, let's conscript. Jesus Christ. Yeah, let's conscript basically the entire goddamn population. <sighs> <laughs> this is going to be a rough war, but it will be the defining war for Romania. And honestly, just looking at him, he has good defense and forest terrain. This is all forest here. Man, that is that is difficult. Should I fire him? Who else can I hire here? That is, I guess, the, the bigger question at the end of the day. Hedonist, Bandit? That's, that's not that great. Uh, we don't have a defensive planner. Technically, he already gives defense. So what I'm going to do is, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead keep him here in power and set ourselves on the defense until the day that we actually have all of our people in order here, all of the conscripts and so on. And obviously, uh, I'm going to need a bit more in terms of ammunition. Apparently, we can't produce enough of this on our own. The biggest question, the biggest issue will really be everything related to our sea lane structure right here. The Ottomans aren't involved, which is great. But if, if the Austrians can interrupt us here, then we have a huge issue. All right, and here they go attacking us. Um, do we have any shortages in the military side of things? Not really, but I guess these are the things that we were trading with the Austrians for. Um, hmm. Man, that's gonna be that's gonna be a bit of a pain here. All right, the first battle, and it kind of looks like we're shredding them at the very least when it comes to the actual uh, dead wounded ratio here. We just need to keep up our defense for quite some time. I think ultimately, surely, this will cost them so much money that. Can they keep this up, you think? Their economy is 98.5 million. The big question really... Ooh, and the Germans are winning in Alsace Lorraine. The big question really will be about... And we already conquered this. That's nice. Can we sustain our naval network? That is the one big question. Oh, and did this general actually die? There is no way. All right. <laughs> Let's get another general right here. That is ridiculous. And here they are raiding. Yeah, we definitely need to intervene here. Um, escort convoys. 
They definitely go through here no matter where we escort. So you know what, just escort the convoys to Italy, I guess? I don't, I don't even know why we're escorting over there. But yeah, escort the convoys and let's hope that this just goes away. Come on. Come on, what land are we getting? I, I set the uh, objective right here onto Banat. Is this gonna is this gonna capture all three provinces? Or provinces in all three states, I should say? Ah, oh, you gotta be kidding me. One province off and we would actually be able to press them below zero. Ah, oh, as it stands, that's gonna be difficult. Uh, we are researching, actually. Automatic machine gun right here. After that, I think war propaganda is very, very vital. I think if we can afford it, I would love machine gunners. Man, the, the kill rate, the morale damage, it's all so good. But let's just see, how's this battle going right here? Can we win this? Will we win this? Yeah. Okay, that's a good start. Okay, I've switched a couple of battalions. Our regular battalions, all of them now have machine guns, and then the conscript troops in Northern Transylvania also have machine guns. Uh, the result is that we can kind of afford this. We're not really running out of anything, right? I really, I gotta tell you, I am benefiting so hard from the secondary equipment adjustment only being 20% because this actually allowed me to switch machine gunners, which now makes it so that we are killing them at an incredible rate. Look at the difference here. Look at the wounded. Jesus Christ, I think we can actually pull this off. How, how much did we spend on this? 10 million already. They've spent 5.8 million. Jesus Christ, yeah, but... I think it's gonna work out. Oh, and it looks like the Germans did not succeed. It looked like they, well, indeed failed, right? We're looking at a situation where France beat them back. Elsa's Lorraine, never to be German, it seems. All right, this is an insanely bloody war. Look at this. Um, I'm not sure. I don't really want to push because they just have such a significant battalion advantage. Sadly, it doesn't really work via the actual manpower in these battalions, which would be beneficial for us because we're almost equalizing them with these massive sort of battles. But nonetheless, I don't think we can push right now. Um, once we do acquire war propaganda in about 21 months, man, I really wish that was faster. Once we acquire this, I think we'll be fine. You know what worries me, though? It's this. It's this right here. This is awful. We're fighting for our lands, but we might get sabotaged internally. And I don't know whether you're aware, but Bulgarians and the Turks largely just live here in Dobruja, which ultimately means that they would quite literally cut us off from the sea, take our entire naval supply network with them, and that's it. I think... I think I want to be safe than... better safe than sorry, right? I hope this doesn't start a civil war. But I'm going to start passing this. Because the revolution would end this. We can wait this out, I think. We have the budget, we have the potential, we're winning against their navy. I'm just worried that we would actually face even a Hungarian secession. This would be awful because this would actually take away the lone war goal that they have against us, meaning I can be pushed below zero war support. Maybe this is the big reform that Romania needs. Yeah, they were pushing for this as well here. Let's, let's just push this through ASAP and we'll go from there. Oh my god, our radical numbers look so bad because I raised taxes. Look look at the standard of living dipping. Everybody is angry. Ah, oh, listen, we just need to hold. War propaganda can turn this ship around, okay? I, I believe in it. At least they're melting like this. Jesus Christ. Oh, and it immediately passed. Okay, wait a minute. Does this immediately go away? Do they calm down? Please don't do this. <laughs> wait a minute, I thought they, they couldn't secede if they were accepted. You are now accepted. Huh. Oh, it seems to be trending down, right? Yes, ever so slowly. I think they need to be underneath 50% and then they can't revolt. The Turks still can revolt and that could be a huge issue for us. Man, this is rough. This is very rough. Again, at the very least, we know that they keep melting here in these mega battles. What, what, what are you doing here? What, what are you guys doing? This guy, who is in the Congo HQ, is trying to duel Admiral Carol Mocioni, who is a war hero. Are you kidding me? You know what? I'm, I'm banning dueling. Get out of here. And oh my god. We almost have more troops. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try one counterattack. Just a single one. But I think they will replenish fairly quickly here. Can we do- Oh, they replenished so much. How are we doing? We're losing. Oh, that is- that is a- uh, that is awful. I find it so comical that we're basically having a World War One going on just between us and Austria. Germany and France, they were also ramping up to World War One, and they just peaced out. They, they just called it a day. Huh. And oh god, our great Qing war operations just went away. What do I do now? 
<laughs> this severely limits the time that we have. Uh, the Bulgarians are still at 52%. I hope this goes down. I really need them to not rebel here. Oh, it's not ticking down any further. That is not great. That is not great. All right, we got five months. Five months until war propaganda. If we get this, we get a, a big chunk of additional conscriptable, uh, conscriptable battalions and our morale loss goes down. I think then we can turn the tide onto the offensive. It's just that they're so superior right now in numbers. It's just not viable. Can we afford it? Frankly, that is a that's an entirely different topic. Man, this is uh you can very clearly see where the war began in our population curve. This is disgusting. Oh, and I think China might actually fall apart in just a second. Look at that. Preserve right of assembly. They're currently giving in to a more conservative faction. And if this rebellion fires, that's that's it. That is fragile unity over. Alright, and here it is. Um let's see what happens with the actual amount of troops that we have. Does, are they? Are we going ahead here and conscripting more folks? Oh yeah, there they come. All right, they just get auto conscripted. Up to seventy nine thousand now. <laughs> will this actually work, or will I have to peace out after all this? I don't know yet. I have no idea. This is not the boost of troops that I was hoping for. I'll tell you that much, though. Um, hmm. Oh, and there they go. Radical China. China actually kept it together thanks to the revolution looking at this. Damn. Um, this would all be warlords if this wasn't for the revolution. So we will have a fairly strong central China, but obviously it will still be hampered. Manchuria is a warlord state that we actually now have a treaty port in. Interesting. Maybe we can add them to our sphere of influence uh, <laughs> after this, yeah? Oh no, you can't do this. Bulgarian secession. What did I pass this law for? Tell me right now, what did I what did I pass that law for, huh? Uh I we have one more attack, I think. I need to immediately start pushing as soon as this battle is over because the Bulgarian secession is definitely gonna fire and screw us over. Our port is gone. There's no debate about this. Will I get the attack in first? Oh we got it in at the same time, what the hell? And we're losing this one. And this one will be a win. I'm gonna hire a second general right here. Who do we take? Who do we take? This guy. You will be... You will literally just exist to retake... Dobruja. Which will go with the Bulgarian Rebellion. How's the election going? <laughs> okay. The National Liberal Party started this war and nobody's in favor of it anymore. The Conservatives are winning. This was... They, they changed racial segregation and what do they have to show for it? Absolutely nothing. Yeah, it's been a bit of a disaster, huh? It has been a bit of a disaster. And look at all these trade route removes uh, removed. This is this is so terrible. All of this is awful. We have to we are we are <laughs> Swindling Futurity claims that the National Liberal Party policy of extensive money loaning has saddled future generations with an undue burden of caused the party to leak voters like a faulty sieve. <sighs> this is beautiful. Because this is this is the end of national liberal supremacy in Romania. We threw everything into this war and we come out empty-handed. I absolutely love this. I know this sounds counterintuitive, but this is this is the most interesting ending turn that this could have taken. I'm just I cannot believe. Had we had one more province right here, we could have gotten it. But the Austrians held the entire time. Now let me ask you. Austria is plus 81, so very clearly I was wrong about that as well. <sighs> Can I take the Congo? Nope, okay. I don't know what bankruptcy then is indicated by, but I mean, we are bankrupt. <laughs> Thanks to Dobruja leaving us alone. Look at our GDP. Whew. We, may, we may be seeing some radical change coming up for Romania in just the last few decades. Wait, what? What is this? Oh, it's Ethiopia. I can't believe this. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, election is over. Let's take a look at what the result actually was. The Conservative Party has swept it. Now they are in charge. And I think we might just we might just return. What is the ideology of the petite bourgeoisie? Jingoist and moderate. Mm, disappointing. But yeah, I I I think we'll literally leave empty-handed here. And there's the default. This is, this is beautiful. A country that tried everything ends in complete failure. 
I think I can leave you with this image. <laughs> what a complete disaster. Absolutely beautiful. Folks, this train has derailed and it is a complete disaster. I couldn't love it more because this disaster is exactly what will make the next 20 years interesting. And with that, I will leave you here today. Tomorrow, we will be picking up the pieces of what once was Romania and maybe we will be looking into this. For the moment, I will see you later. Alligator.